Okay, today we're looking at the work of Jim Dine, famous American pop artist. I've got a trowel here. Uh, Jim Dine was famous for uh, drawing objects in his father's hardware store, personal items to the family. In our project, we're going to be getting personal items uh, to draw from, so everything becomes a little bit more uh, individual for the students. Uh, see, we take the trowel away here, drawing it from real life. What Jim Dine would do would be to obviously look at linear outline. Obviously he would be following areas of contour lines as we've been doing with our, our work previously. Uh, and putting some of the kind of handle marks on here, the old tools which we use. You can use the, basically the tone to follow the contour lines as we've been doing on various objects that you use. It could be cars, it could be items to do with sports. As you can see around the bottom here, I'm curving all the established where the contour lines are and I'm following the tone around. You can see there. And again, I might beam in here to show the uh, We go in, show that there are edges on the trowel at the top here. Those edges need to be emphasised. Let's see as we go in there. Having an edge. It's almost like here, this part of the trowel on the aeroplane wing. Having that edge would basically mean that you can show the 3D form. And that was apparent in Dine's work. See again. And shade here, you can see it's almost like a triangular wing, but it's following the three dimensional form. The same around here as well. So we go down and around again, we'll rub that a little bit out so you can see it just showing the form. So we go in there, like so. And around. Again, we can establish where the, the lines are on here. Just do some kind of curved contour lines. And obviously, any form of shading will follow those lines around there. Uh, we've got the contour lines put in here. Just rub out, just to revisit that again, just to show you. Uh, Again, just following the lines around, you can see here with that trial, we follow them around. That would happen. The curves, bit more nice and consistent, and then obviously the shading goes around like so. Let me go around this way. Part of the metal there like so that's just an insight showing you how to get the three-dimensional form again around here we've got a slight edge helps us to define the form and leading down to the trowel top here again shading in the form here as such. Again on the top of the trowel here with a slight edge which we're going to emphasise again. You can see how the form is beginning to look so much more three-dimensional by adding the edges there. The contour lines are followed like so. Uh, what we could do also here is to beam in even further just to show you that. There we go. You can see the slight edges here which I've emphasised 
going across to show the form there as such. And beam out again. Back to the trowel. And what Jim Dine did is that he used a lot of the background space quite effectively. I mean this is quite a large piece of paper here and the emphasis is on to use the background effectively to get rid of the negative space which is kind of engulfing this trial here. So Dime would use mark making around the edge of objects expressively to kind of fill in that space but still keeping the object as a focal point, lightly putting on areas of tone around the edge. In some ways these look slightly lighter, as you can see, slightly lighter than the formed object here. Just breaking up the negative space but also making sure that the composition had elements of positive space around the edge so we're utilising all the areas and not leaving the trowel on its own in the middle of a big space so you can kind of understand that the composition would probably be something more like this here and again Dime would look at producing marks here in some cases rubbing in here giving a softer element to the background as opposed to the sharp rigid areas of the tools he used in the main primary foreground So it's quite good to again emphasize the areas which are sharper and nearer to you. That's obviously the objects which following the contour lines as we've established there. And the background you can see is softer elements of monochrome in here, different types of tone. You've got the dark, medium dark, medium light. So you can see on here, the lighter ones, as I said, in the background, the darker tones been established on the edges here and compositionally the whole thing begins to work probably leave a little slight halo around the edge here just to emphasize the tool itself dark onto dark can sometimes lead to uh, the object fading one into the other one dark and dark obviously you want to avoid that and you keep the edge by just having that slight halo there as you can see on here. Further emphasizing the tool itself. And obviously for the remainder of the demo, 
we'll just be looking at keeping the emphasis on highlighting the forefront of the tool with subtle nuances on the background also. Dime actually painted as we were drawing, he would let the uh, background elements the paint drip down. Uh, obviously, with pencil, it's not possible to do that, but obviously, when we paint, we can adapt, which gives it a really, really nice, fresh, vibrant element to the actual work itself. <laughs> 